Hello and welcome to the Los Angeles Tribune. Since 1886, our name has been a part of the world of journalism. Well, welcome everybody. I wanted to thank everybody for being on. My name is Michael Silvers. I'm Vice President of the Los Angeles Tribune. What a day we have. What a day podcasting. But it's not just about that. It's about your story. It's about how you get yourself out there. It's about how you make a difference in the world. So first of all, everybody raise your hand up wherever you are and just say, I am ready for more. That's fantastic. The other thing too is this show is not just us speaking at you. We're watching the comments all day long. We will answer questions. We'll be there for you. And we're going to move rapid fire fast. We're podcasters. We get it done. But again, remember, it's about your story. So whether you're really thinking about it from, do I have a story? Do I have a podcast? Are you a writer, speaker, author, trainer? Are you a th are you making a difference? Are you right now driving in your Uber going, this is fantastic, but how do I get my story out there? There's so many things you can do. It's for entrepreneurs, most used word name in the planet. But it's all those things we have together. And we are literally going to move really fast. We're going to go bam, bam, bam. So we're going to start the show off with some amazing, but podcasters also have big media presence. And they also are authors and they get things done. And we have a lot of shows coming up. And we'll be talking about that later today when we leave it all. So first of all, if you're really excited on there, put a one in the chat. If you're really excited, put a one on the chat and share this with everybody you know. So I've got an amazing group of hosts today. You're going to see very little of me because when you build the, when you have a great team, say I am a great team builder, but when you have a great team around you, you're one team, you're flat. Everybody does the same. Everybody works together. Everybody goes for the mission. Look at the ones popping through. Jeffrey from Australia. <laughs> Welcome to the call. You guys are awesome. Um, also, you can let us know where you're calling in from. That's always fantastic. Calling in from, right? It's the old calling show. I can't help myself. Um, but it's just great to have everybody on here. For myself and Mr. Mo Rock, the CEO, we are so pleased to be bringing this to you. We're so pleased to have this show. Um, and and we have just amazing team. You're going to see from Karen Hall, who put this whole thing together, had the idea and the inception and got it all done. You're going to see team on here that are just building it every day. You're going to see Sandy Scarlatta with this amazing podcast she has, but also great interviewing skills. You're about to hear from the vice president of Tony Robbins for 18, 18 years, Mary Glorfield, and a gentleman who has got a podcast of half a million downloads a month. You're going to hear from podcasters who are building, who are training, who are speaking, who are entrepreneurs, some of the biggest shows on the planet to just those doing it every single day, getting it done and figuring it out. And there's a lot to learn, a lot to take from it. And I'm so excited to be here. So with that, yeah, you're in. I know it. You guys are awesome. Um, so with that being said, I'm really excited now. I will have, uh, could I have the hosts come up to the panel? Hosts, come on up, bring yourself up. Hosts, bring yourself up so we can all, there we go, look at them. They're such a beautiful group. This is just amazing. All right, fantastic. So with everybody up and really, and Julianne, uh, here, I'll, uh, I'm going to, yeah, I know, I know. There we go. Julianne's up. Uh, Sandy, come on up. There we go. Uh, Mary, I'm going to put you down just for a second because I'm going to bring you back. Okay, there we go. Um, so just tell me, uh, it's an exciting day and it's great that we're all here. Um, Karen, tell us about your excitement today. <laughs> yes, Michael, as we are celebrating International Podcast Day and the Podcast Network with the Los Angeles Tribune, it's so exciting to have so many experts that are willing to join us and teach us how to grow our podcast. So many times we start a podcast, it's so awesome. We're rolling and going and then all of a sudden we're like, well, wait, how do I grow this thing? <laughs> and so I am so excited to have all of these hosts with us today to spotlight and shine the starlight on our amazing guests. And so Alicia, how about you? Tell me about how you're feeling about today. I mean, Karen, you said so much. I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, the podcast industry is growing at such a massive rate. People are turning to podcasts for knowledge, to stay informed, and to learn about their favorite con their, their favorite topics. And so podcasts are a great way to learn. And I think what's truly special about the summit today is people are going to get strategies. Like if you're interested in podcasting and you're not sure what to do, you're going to learn strategies about how to get engaged. You're going to hear about trends on how the podcast industry is continuously evolving because that landscape is shifting all of the time. And you're going to learn. You're going to get to hear topics of empowerment and inspiration. So it's truly a special celebration of podcast day today. And I'm just thrilled. What are you thinking, Julianne? 
Thank you, Alicia. You know, I'm so excited because on the summit, we're going to be busting myths and solving issues and make this seem so much easier because I don't know about you, but most people have thought about doing a podcast and thought, oh my goodness, what am I supposed to do next? How am I going to monetize this? How do I make this not be a vanity project? How do I grow and make this worth my time? And more importantly, how is this going to impact the people who are listening and watching me do this? Because ultimately, nobody wants to just go out and talk to nothing. They want to make a difference. And that's why we're here today. We're here to make a difference difference. And Ava, what about you? Oh my gosh. Well, I have to say podcasters are my favorite people on the planet. Look, I'm just going to show a sneak peek. This is the LA Tribune Podcast Network people. Well, some of them, and they are the most amazing people. I just fell in love with podcasters. I'm like, they have all the things to say. So um, I'm excited because they can talk um, and, and they love to talk. So I am looking forward to today. I am looking forward to the interviews, Mary Glorfield, you know, Evan Carmichael, um, David Meltzer, all the good people. I am just so excited. So I can't wait. Well, with Daniel. that, let me call Daniel. Daniel, <laughs> what are you looking forward to? Welcome, Daniel. Daniel's a really great new part of our team that we're excited to have on the show with us. Hi. Yes, um, I'm really excited to hear all these great speakers, uh, David Meltzer, um, all these great uh, podcasters, and learn more about podcasting. You know, Daniel, it's great to have you on too. So Daniel's one of the newest members of really the team and what we're building. And 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 Avin and Alicia, didn't he just sort of jump in and say, "How could I be of service?" Right? And and those are the you know, and 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 Karen said she needed something. What was that midnight last night? I don't know. There was things going on, right? So it's you know, this is where it's such a great team, and and you guys are amazing. Sandy, it's amazing to have you on. Well, thank you. Thank you, you for being. You are the podcaster. <laughs> Well, only because I've probably been doing it a lot longer than a lot of people. Well, except for Sam Crowley. I think he's he's going to take us all. You know, you we, 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 Karen, I'm going to turn the show over to you. We're staying right on time. You know how this goes. Um, also, uh, they wanted the team wanted me to mention that it is also the end of uh, uh uh, it's it's the Hispanic month. It's really the tradition and so much going on that way. And with that being said, I won't drip that there's going to be a Spanish journal coming, but everybody out there, get ready. Lots of things happening. Uh, we have the Barnes and Noble show, right? Coming up October 24th and Sheila E is coming to hang out with us and she's up for the Grammys and the Latin Grammys and it's going to be an amazing night. So I'm going to turn the show over now to Karen and Sandy. You two have a great time. I'm going to go play with a grandchild. <laughs> I'll be listening. <laughs> All right, you two. Have a good one. Oh, thank you. Oh, Sandy, it's so great to be with you today. And as we mentioned, Sandy has a huge podcast, Happiness Solved. And Sandy, it's great that we can um, be joined today by David Meltzer. And we're going to bring him up. And David, hey. thank you so much for being with <laughs> us today. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yes, and David. Hi. <laughs> so great to see you. I think I saw you last at one of your VIP dinners in Las Vegas. Yes, we did. Which was incredible. Yes, yes. Then if you could tell us how you met David and, and about David, and then we will have him. We'll start asking him questions. <laughs> well, David and I met through Craig Siegel. And uh, yeah, Craig is going to be on a little bit later today, which is going to be amazing. And I met Craig in New York and he introduced me to David and I had David on my podcast. And uh, and it was so funny because I was so nervous. I think, David, you were probably like the biggest guest that I had had at that time. And I was so nervous to even ask you to come on my show. <laughs> and here's the thing. I think one of the first things you said to me was, well, you're not going to get anything if you don't ask or something like that. What was it that you said to me? Yeah, well, we don't, but you aren't going to get unless we ask. And uh, I think receiving is a difficult thing for a lot of people, but it's an important lesson in podcasting uh, to be able to ask as I've been doing it for a long time. One of my podcasts, we have 1950 episodes, uh, 4,000 and some guests on another one of my podcasts. So uh, we never would have got any of them if we didn't just ask. And uh, thank you for asking me. It's uh, a pleasure and a privilege to have been on your podcast. 
Oh, thank you, David. Well, it was a hard, it was a good lesson for me to learn. <laughs> and, and I, and since then I have been working on receiving, right? Just opening that container of receiving. And, and as a podcaster, that receiving needs to be, that container needs to be open. <laughs> for sure. It really, it really does. Yeah. It, it, I was going to say, it's one of the biggest messages. A lot of people think the more you give, the more you receive, but people get in their way in three different respects. One, the more you give, the more you're given. And so a lot of people don't even notice all that they're given. They don't use their gratitude and forgiveness to be aware. And so they're looking at things as punishment. Now, I've had some basements in my life, some basements of basements in my life. And I've always looked at it as what I, am I given by whatever circumstance it is that uh, reveals itself each day. But if we do elevate all that we're given, now we have to be worthy of receiving it. And so many of us uh, play a zero sum game where we give and we're given, but then we don't feel worthy of receiving it. So we're, oh, it's okay. Uh, it's fine. We, I don't need that. It's fine. And I find the nicest, kindest people have this problem. So teachers and first responders, single moms, if not all moms, I find they just don't feel worthy of receiving. And then what happens is you're receiving less than you give. And if you know math, like I do, you end up with zero. And so part of podcasting and everything else I do is to teach people about the infinite loop of abundance, that we give more, give in more, receive more. And then as we suggested earlier, ask for more than more. Now you can give more than more, be given more than more, receive more than more, and ask for more than more than more. So instead of ending up with zero, we end up with more than enough of everything for everyone. Mm. Wow. That was, that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I love that abundance mentality. <laughs> I live by it. And uh, as the queen of empathy, I'm sure you live in that inf infinite loop, Karen, as well. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, David, if you could tell us about your podcast journey. Yeah, it was on accident. I was a big radio, uh, sports radio person. So a uh, syndicated radio show out of Anaheim Stadium uh, with the Angels, with Jim Layritz and I called The Sports Blender. And so I had a syndicated radio show where we bring on guests and talk about sports, mostly mindset, heart set, not really reporting the sports, but I've always, the entrepreneurship of sports. And I was helping out uh, AJ Vaynerchuk uh, they wanted to start a sports agency. I'd run the most notable sports agency in the world with Lee Steinberg. Warren Moon and I had started a global sports marketing company. So I told AJ, I'd be happy to help him. And he said, well, you need to meet my brother. And so we met at the Super Bowl in the Nike suite. And this guy named Gary V comes into the Nike suite. And everyone gets super excited about this guy named Gary V. I looked at AJ and said, who does he play for? And he started to laugh. He said, are you kidding? I said, no. He goes, that's my brother. You're, that's who you're meeting, Gary Vaynerchuk. And so I uh, sat down with Gary and, and he was a fan of my radio show. He's a sports guy and he knew my career. And he said, why don't you have a podcast? And this is about eight years ago. And I said, well, there's too many podcasts. There's like 200,000 podcasts, Gary. Why I have a syndicated successful sports radio program why would I do a podcast? And he's like, oh my gosh. He goes, let me help you. And so uh, I created the playbook about seven, seven and a half Super Bowls ago. Um, and the playbook was to leverage all the famous billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and entertainers to get their playbook to success, to happiness. And so 1950 episodes, you know, featured on Sirius XM, on entrepreneur, uh, obviously on all the regular platforms, even at the airports, uh, at the gates and hotel rooms, you'll see the playbook. Um, so I've done quite a few. Like I said, I have another podcast called Office Hours, um, which we've done about 680 episodes with four guests each episode. So uh, I've learned a lot about podcasting for a guy that thought there was too many years and years ago. <laughs> I, I well, you know. No, I was just going to say Sam Crowley, you know, just brought up a, a huge statistic that right now only 18% of podcast episodes are, are, are new. 
right? Wow. So even though there may be over 5 million podcasts, most of them are not posting on a regular basis. So it's really not as big as you think. Yeah. Well, that's my first piece of advice. You know, so many people want me to teach them how to podcast, how to brand, how to market, how to elevate or build a community, which is far more than just podcasting. But I'll tell a podcaster, the first thing you need to do is do 10 episodes. Just keep them in the can. Because if you can do 10 episodes, not only will you learn about your voice and learn about podcasting, the equipment, uh, all the incongruencies that exist with audio, especially, but most importantly, you'll be in the top 1% of all podcasts because 99% of the people quit before they get to 10 episodes. <laughs> Right, right. And you know, I think that's interesting because a lot of people, uh, they don't they don't understand that that competition drops off <laughs> pretty quick, you know, if you will stick with it. And, um, and, and so many of our podcasters with the podcast network with the Los Angeles Tribune are so excited to hear from you because, you know, talk about having a playbook. <laughs> so tell us some more some more of your insider tips in in the playbook for podcasting. Yeah, so there's four realms to strategize and to practice. Remember, practice has one instant result. It's called progress. And so uh, the outcomes are irrelevant to uh, your practice of a podcast. It's the progress that's inherent in practicing. So there's four areas that I suggest people ask for help or strategize or get uh, some sort of uh, consistent behavior with. One, I'm probably one of the world's greatest content captures. Uh, that's different than being a content creator. I hire people to create content from the content that I capture. So the first thing that you should become an expert at or practice becoming an expert at is how am I capturing my content? I know that Sam was talking about a variety of consistent behaviors and how to have a, a, a consistent uh, outflow of content, but it's really about how you capture it. And you want to capture your essence. One of the reasons Sam is so successful is he captures his essence, his frequency. And that creates the neighborhood of people that resonate with your frequency. But I tell people, you got to really get good at capturing content. He talked about being in the garage, capturing it, being able to. Well, I capture content all the time. And then I use the second strategy, which is modification. Uh, so the content creation happens in the modification of my essence. So I have one strategy to capture as much as I can of my essence. Then I have a whole nother team and strategy of creating content through modification, modifying it for YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, this show, wherever it may be, reach TV at the airports and hotel rooms, entrepreneur.com, all the areas that I am going to the third strategy, which is amplify. And so in the amplification is being able, as Sam said, take five minutes afterwards. That's an amplification strategy. He takes five minutes after the interview. He creates an emotional connection. He makes it easier for people to go ahead and post or amplify his essence, his content to cannibalize the community that they have. And then the fourth one is an advantage of being old. Uh, uh, there's not many advantages of being old and you cannot, uh, unfortunately describe to young people what it's like to get old. It's kind of like having kids and getting married. You just got to do it for yourself. And they're not going to listen even if you give them advice. I remember my dad telling me I couldn't gain weight in college. And he said, oh, just wait. Someday you'll look at food and get fat. And I, ro I rolled my eyes at him. I'm like, are you kidding me? I I'll be able to eat whatever I want, whenever I want, with whoever I want. Well, he was right. And I had to learn for myself that when you're over 50 and you look at food, you're going to get fat. I don't know why that is. It's just understanding. But one of the advantages of being old is we understand perpetuation of content. And this is something that a lot of people don't build for. I do. I have a complete strategy of everything I capture, modify, and amplify. I create a social silo, a repository, a perpetual database of my content for internal and of course, external use. Why is this important? Well, it hit me years ago when Netflix first came out and I walked in and my kids were all on my couch. I have four children, three daughters and a son. And they looked at me and said, dad, have you ever heard of friends? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
<laughs> wow. Uh, yes, uh, it was really a, a good show, huh? Yeah, we're watching all of them. And I thought to myself, you know, if there wasn't a perpetuation of con uh, a content, a social silo, you know, how long would it take for friends to dissipate and dissolve like MASH? You know, or some of the shows I grew up, I still, Laverne and Shirley, you don't see those shows uh, everywhere, but you still see shows like Friends because they actually created a social silo in actual community, and now it's perpetual. They'll be, their kids will ask about Friends. They'll be downloading it and binge watching it for years to come. You have to, from the start, build as if you're building a community and that you're building a perpetual social silo and evolution of your own content that will leave a legacy uh, for years to come. That's great. Wow. I got so lost in hearing the, this story that I, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, going, oh, we're going to have to ask a question next. So Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. That's also a good trick, right? All you right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what a you compliment, by the way. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it was great. No, I love you're such a great storyteller, obviously. And and that's, you know, like Sam was saying, get rid of the first 50 episodes. When you do a couple of thousand episodes, you just get better at it and you get better at it. So you and Craig, you have another, you can we could call it a podcast because it's consistent. Yes. The paradigm shift. You do it every Saturday morning. How many of those are you up to now? That's a great story. So we're at 189 of those. And yeah. I, co I coach Craig Siegel. So in proof of mentorship, which is also something I teach in podcasting, find someone that sits in the situation you want to be in and ask them for help. So Craig asked me for help for speaking, podcasting, and coaching business. Um, and so I he wanted to do this show on Saturday. So I told him, Craig, look, everybody wants me to do a show with them, but I will do it with you, but you have to make me one promise. You won't miss. You won't miss a Saturday. And if you do, that'll be the end of the show. The day you miss a Saturday is the day. And I said, I won't miss either. So I travel, I'm going to Dubai. I'm going to do it out of Dubai. I've done it for my car. I did it at the Bayou in New Orleans, hung over at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I think I got four hours of sleep, but I did it. Craig did it on his wedding day. Uh, as you may remember, Sandy, two weeks ago, Craig did it on his wedding day. It's called The Paradigm Shift, and it is a podcast. And the yeah. reason it's a podcast is, remember, we just capture it on IG Live, but then we modify and amplify it and perpetuate it. And we've done 188 uh, episodes of it. And we went from having just him and I to having a guest to now we have two guests, uh, you know, and we've had the biggest guests uh, as well, cannibalizing all the different shows that we have. Another nice thing about doing more than one show is when you get popular, you're able to accommodate everyone. So if your book, my, my playbook podcast, um, I do 10 episodes a week and I think we're booked for six or seven months at 10 episodes a week. But I have office hours that we have four guests. I do IG lives every day. I have the human experience. I have paradigm shift. I have success with Marshall Falk. Um, so I have a variety of shows where people say, hey, can I come on your podcast? I have a place for everyone. Uh, and including just ask me anything that I do where someone you know, may want to get some content. I'm like, look, come on and ask me anything and ask me a question. It's the same as an interview. You got to modify it, amplify it, and perpetuate it. You can create a podcast out of anything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, with the 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 lives that you do every week, what I can you just tell the audience how that has helped in terms of the consistency, just for that particular show, like how, that consistency by doing it every week, how that's okay. made a difference. So. I lives remember that social media is not creator centric. So many people have this total misconception of social media. They think it's creator centric. That it's the creator. It's not, it's consumer centric. And so, you know, human beings have a problem and that's why the most annoying people, um, are the most successful and, and that comes from parenting content, whatever. What I mean by that, there's two things that make, uh, or annoy human beings. And I'll take it in the context of being a parent. Honesty. 
it, you know, when you're honest with your kids, it annoys the crap out of them. Uh, and so people don't want to hear the truth. But in podcasting and in content creation, you have to tell the truth. You have to be who you are. You have to be vulnerable and illuminate what you're thinking, feeling, believing. You know, you, you have to be you. Uh, and then two is the really annoying thing, which you guys will agree, which is being repetitive. See, human beings don't learn right away. I think Sam said they remember 20% or four minutes of a 20 minute podcast, whatever the numbers were. Well, here's what's worse. They Even if they remember that to start, they're going to forget it. So repetition is the superpower of content. And so if you do something every day at the same time every day or nearly the same time, you're going to get the superpower of being you and two, getting people's attention. And they're going to, after hearing something for the 50th time, they're actually going to remember you recollect with you, remind with you. In other words, they're going to be on your frequency, your neighborhood. There's that hypnotic repetition. It's an essence of what you do. It's my secret sauce. I'm lucky I'm OCD and I moved it from terrible things like drugs and alcohol into some really great things like being consistent about empowering people to make money, help people and have fun, to be super positive. And it's amazing how we can take a, a dis-ease like OCD and turn it into a superpower because I will tell you, I may not be the best podcaster in the world, but I will tell you, I think I'm one of the most consistent content captures and content amplifiers in the world. I'm there every single day and I'm usually not at home. I'm usually somewhere else and I'm able to go ahead and create all this content uh, by capturing what I do every day. Wow. You know, David, I, I would love, we have some more time. I would love to have you tell us a little bit about that change in your life, about overcoming some of the things that you have, because I feel like there's more to that backstory that provides the why for you that motivates you to continue with your messages. It's so fun because I grew up with a single mom. Someone uh, had said uh, about that earlier. I, I grew up with a single mom and she was amazing, but the only time I wasn't happy as a child, we had six kids. My mom worked two jobs, pa literally second grade teacher, packed my dinner in a paper bag and all the kids in a station wagon and then filled up turnstiles at convenience stores with greeting cards just so we could eat. Um, but I killer, unbelievable childhood, except for when there's a financial difficulty, it was awful. So I wanted to be rich. I wanted to buy my mom a house, a car, take care of my mom. That was it. So I went through life wanting to be rich. Every decision I made was about being rich. Only reason I did well in school because it would increase my chances of being rich. Uh, my siblings who went to Harvard, Penn, Columbia, summa cum laude, they, they used their education earlier on. They had a better perspective. They just wanted to help people like my mom, not me. I wanted to help my mom and I was going to be rich. So anyway, I graduate in law school and instead of being an oil and gas litigator, I choose to work in the internet where I make my first million dollars nine months out of law school in 1992 when people thought the internet was a fad, the same way they thought Bitcoin was a fad. And then in 95, we exited for $3.4 billion. And I took my skill set into venture and technology, which led me to be worth over $100 million, running Samsung's data division at 31, married to my dream girl in a dream life, except for I wasn't happy because I had all the money and I still wasn't happy. And so I ended up surrounding myself with the wrong people and the wrong ideas, using my superpower for negativity, not positivity and progress, bad behavior, not good behavior. And it resulted while I was running Lee Steinberg Sports Entertainment, the most notable sports agency in the world, in me losing everything. And I sat on my bed one night after my wife told me she was leaving me for being uh, an idiot and uh, hating my wife, hating my mom, hating my dad and hating my best friend. Mm -hmm. And my wife told me she was leaving and wasn't going to stay at home with our three daughters to watch me die. And I sat on that bed and realized I don't hate my mom, my wife, my best friend or my dad. I hated myself. 
my wife told me I better take stock in who I was and what I wanted to become. And so I did just that. And I practiced values and practices and executed every day to improve myself and my behaviors. Luckily, my wife gave me a second chance, uh, told me, uh, here's the wisdom of my wife. I, I have a great quote, just so you know, behind every great man is not only an amazing woman, but an amazed woman. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I, I, I live by that. Anyway, she told me, look, I'm not asking you to change overnight. I just want you to try. If, if you're not trying, I, I know if I give you an ultimatum, you're going to fail. But if you work at it, I know, I know the power of you. Uh, you can do this. Well, after that, I lost everything. Two years after that, transformation, I lost everything and I built it all back with a different mindset. Instead of always trying to get more, I changed my life and said, I am. And through wisdom of asking for help of others and faith, faith in something bigger than me, an omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source who loved me, protect me, and promoted me, I make more money than I ever have, help more people than I ever have. And definitely have more fun. I'm more passionate and purposeful than ever. And so I always thank my mom and my wife, especially uh, for changing the way that I not only looked at things, but changed the way that I do things, think things, feel things and believe things. And I wouldn't have this extraordinary life uh, if it wasn't for those two powerful women in my life uh, and uh, God. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, that that is such a beautiful tribute to these powerful women in your life and and their faith. You, I mean, goodness, you brought me to tears just hearing that story about your wife and how she influenced you and 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 said, I, I don't expect this overnight, you know, but I know, I know the power within you. I know the, the ability that you have, and and then to turn to God and and have your faith be such an integral part. Thank you so much for sharing that beautiful story with us. Yeah, it's my life, yeah. and uh, but that's what we do. And I, it's funny for me because I never thought I would even admit going bankruptcy. Let all the other things that happened uh, that I find, I, I laugh with my wife. I said, you know, more people pay me for financial advice because I lost over a hundred million dollars <laughs> than when I made it. You would think, like, <laughs> while I was making it, people would say, "Hey, how are you doing this?" No, it was actually after I lost it all. <laughs> People, they want to know my advice. And that's because, and you guys are in California with me, so you'll love this, or in New York or California. But regardless, I love people that move away from New York or California because of taxes. And I say to myself, I don't understand this at all. Because if you're worried about taxes, then you should just worry about the dummy tax, you know, not, not a state tax. You know, dummy tax will cost you everything you've ever made and will make. So who cares if it's 12% more to get a weather tax in California? Do, you know, I, I encourage people, don't ever move to another state because of taxes. It's the dummy tax that's super expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen, we have a few more minutes and there was a couple of good questions from audience, audience members. Um, so Justine Camalo, she writes, I am 10 years old. What topic do you think would be helpful for me to learn about as I grow up so that I can be like you? Oh, I'm <laughs> I, that, I will tell you that number one, if you want to be like me, say thank you before you go to bed and when you wake up and know mm -hmm. that it takes 0.1 seconds. It's free, but the simple things to do are simple not to do every day. In fact, most people on earth, the world thought leaders, the greatest of all in their own realms will tell you gratitude has the most impact of anything. And yet it's free, takes 0.1 seconds. But by tonight, as much as all of us agree, the simple thing of saying thank you, half of us won't say thank you. By tomorrow, another half won't say thank you. And within three days, almost all of us won't say thank you. So remember the simple things and do them every day even though they're simple not to do every day, be more interested than interesting. And most importantly, the best piece of advice, be especially at 10, be kind to your future self. 
do good deeds. Yes, things that our future self will thank us for. <laughs> yes. Sandy, did you have any last questions? One more question. One more question from Mon, Mon Anthony, who's always on these shows. He's he's always commenting and everything. It's really great. Uh, thank you for being here again, Mon Anthony. So he writes, David and Sandy, if you had the opportunity to choose a topic for your podcast that could reach over 8 billion people worldwide, what topic would you choose? I think I have an idea, David, of what you'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Kindness. Yeah, God, it's so powerful. I would, I can speak all day and night about what it means to be kind and how to be kind and understanding your reactions to fear that are not kind. And to know the instant and obvious is the reaction to fear that's not aligned with where you want to be. And remember that I am kind. What am I doing to interfere with it? I am happy. What am I doing to interfere with it? I am wealthy and worthy. What am I doing to interfere with it? We are part and parcel of an omniscient and all powerful source. Let's just figure out what we're doing to interfere with it. Mm. Uh, even don't worry about what you're afraid of because that's difficult to figure out. You take years of therapy to figure a part of it out. Just understand your reaction to fear. That's when you're angry, upset, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful, you know it instantly. Then just get back to center. Stop interfering with your higher self and your potential. Um, I do want to, in the last minute, offer everyone, I wrote a, a workbook called Creating the Life You Love. It's with Jack Canfield, the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, who sold almost a billion, half a billion books next to the Bible. Uh, he has a lot of books sold. But we created a workbook for people to create the life they love. And if you would like this book, I'd be happy to send it, pay for the book, pay for shipping. Uh, I'll sign it if you wanted to value the book. If not, I won't sign it. Uh, but uh, if you email me directly, I answer all my own emails, David at dmeltzer.com. I'd love to share this workbook so you too can make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Oh, thank you so much. That is so generous of you, David. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bless yeah. you. Yes. And, and thank you for sharing your heart with us. I think we all just came to love you, you know, even more and, um, and to know you as, as a real person, you know, that we don't, you know, so many times you see the big names out there and you see them on social media, but, but you don't, you don't know what, what they're like inside. And, um, and even though you're, you're authentic in all the things that you, the content that you put out there, it's just, it's different to hear from you directly and to be able to have these intimate conversations. Sandy, this has been so fantastic to share this moment with David. And thank you, David, for your generosity to be with us today. Yes, thank you, thank David. You both. See you it. soon. Be kind. Take care. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Everybody go look up the playbook with David Meltzer. Thank you. <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, our next guest is Stacy Chalimi. And so we are going to have a conversation with her. She is just such a superstar. And um, so, Stacy, if you, for our audience, um, I think that they would be amazed to know about your background. Stacy started in in writing many years ago and um she has been in the media with dateline and she has had quite the journey to coming to have her podcast the podcast the advisor sorry the advisor with stacy chilemi and so if you could tell us more stacy and you know for our audience that you know maybe they've started they've made it through the eight podcast mark you know and they're saying now what <laughs> <laughs> tell, us, tell us more about, about you and about what we do when we get to that point. <laughs> well, you know, I when I went into podcast and I didn't even even think that I was going in this direction, you know, it, it began uh, many moons ago, like from the age of five, I had developed a virus and it had tur uh, turned into encephalitis that traveled to my brain. And I was left in a coma for four days. My parents thought I was going to be either paraplegic or I'll have severe brain damage because that's what was told to them by the doctors. So my father, who prayed by my bedside, he uh, sat there and he prayed and he thought about a Greek statue in Greece that used to go by the church and teardrops was known to come out of its eyes. And on the fourth day, a teardrop rolled from my eyes and I woke up. 
And I looked at him and I asked him for McDonald's French fries. And <laughs> I wasn't paraplegic and I didn't have severe brain damage, but I was left with epilepsy. And my life was like a roller coaster ride throughout my entire life. I had my ups and downs, a lot of challenges along the way. Even in college, I didn't know if I was going to be able to actually um, survive because of the, all the seizures. And I had reached out and wrote a letter and they published it in a magazine. And I got three to 400 articles from all over the United States and Canada, people sharing how they cope with it and how they live with it. And it was very inspiring. I actually created my own regiment and I learned from it and I was able to get through um, in my college years and go into my adulthood years with this regiment. And I was also um, able to uh, write a book later on called um, Epilepsy, You're Not Alone, which helped many people. And actually a person wrote to me and thanked me because I saved their life because they were on the verge of suicide and they found my book in Barnes and Nobles. And, you know, I, I was consistently writing, trying to help others because I realized that regimen could help more than just me with epilepsy. It could help people all over with all different conditions, including stress. So, you know, I kept writing and writing. And then I got to a point where I, 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 something just said, I need more. Like, you know, you get to that point in life where you just know you, you need it for a change in life, but you don't know really what it is. And I started with podcasting and I wasn't even really thinking about it, a friend threw it out there and, and had um, said, you really need to, you know, have your voice be heard. And I started with podcasts and, and within three months, I was booked for a year. And it just, the, the podcast just blew up. People wanted to hear what I had to say. And I, you know, I based it on self-improvement because I feel like self-improvement is so important in our society a lot of times we don't work on ourselves we worry about everybody else we do for everybody else but the last person we worry about is ourselves and i you know for me you need your mental health your mental if you don't have your mental health you don't have your physical health if you don't have physical health your spirituality is going to be affected if your spirituality is affected you can't really operate on a full load and then you have trouble at work and if you have trouble at work it goes home it's a it's a circle so it's kind of like the circle of life and in my show i teach people i have people from all walks of life that you know specialize in different areas to show people you know give them help them with all the different areas that they might be lacking it. And in the beginning, I didn't focus, I just focused on one specific niche. But as I went along and as I got to know my audience, I realized that there was more than one niche involved, that they they were, you know, people, my audience actually was telling me that they wanted more. They needed to hear about more things in more areas. And I was able to grow from that. That's fantastic. And and so tell us more, because I know you're a, a 20 times bestselling author. And um, and to have these these media opportunities and things, if we haven't written a book yet and we're not, you know, a celebrity in the media, <laughs> what can we do now to to move us forward with our podcast journey, to grow our podcast, to grow our audience and to to make that difference? Because so many of us we just have such a passion about what we're doing, but we're like, how can I get that out there? <laughs> you know, the, the one thing, even a mistake of my own, is that I did, I focused on the beginning of what I thought people would want to hear. And when I actually started to look at not just the metrics, but I started to put polls out there asking people what you wanted to hear, what were you interested in, what do you want to learn about? Tell me, I want, I needed to learn who my audience was because once I was able to understand what my audience needs were, I was able to cater to them. And that's how the podcast started to grow. It was no longer about me, it was how do I service my audience? Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really awesome. And when it comes to monetizing, do you have any tips on how to convert the audience into a potential client? So what I did was is that I focused on the, I looked at the type of people that were coming on the podcast. And so I had people on my podcast. I had three different types. I had one where they didn't have a podcast, but they had a lot of great information and knowledge to share with the world. Then I had people who came on the podcast and they were kind of, they had a podcast, but they were plateaued and they were having trouble growing it. And then I had people who came on that had very busy lives that wanted to get their voice heard, just didn't have the time to do it. So I catered not just to the audience. I, I focused more on the people that were coming on the show and then creating services because I had a, a very extensive background in marketing and advertising and, and I knew how to you know get the word out there. And because I understood the, the podcasting business so well at this point, I was able to create services to help these 
three types of individuals grow their careers in a different area that they wanted to be in, but they just didn't either have the time or the knowledge. And those are, that's actually how I grew my, my monetization is by focusing on the people that came on the show that were really serious about growing and 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 really getting their message out because it's not so much about the the money part it was getting that message out and i wanted people who were serious wanted to make a change in the world and wanted to do better because that's what it's all about you know money always follows through later on but you know if you do the right thing everything else follows through like a snowball so it's really getting your your mission and your core values in line and really think about, you know, stop thinking about the dollar bill. Think about why you got into this in the first place. You know, get that hum that humbleness back and think about what you really want to accomplish because that's the type of people you want on your show. And then the audience is going to pick up on that right away. So, you know, people aren't stupid, you know, so you really want loving, kind individuals who want to change the world, come on your show and make a huge impact. And that helps the growth of the audience. Yeah. Wow. Sure. Yeah, and what's amazing because you know Sandy is so in tune with energy and things like that, and and she has such a loving presence like you. And I think that that you're right. You know that that comes through even on a podcast online through the airwaves. <laughs> you know we can just we can just feel it. And so, and to then you know have your guest have that same alignment with that kind of energy just just continues all the the love that is going out and coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so Stacy, um, can you, you know, being being so aware of social media and and utilizing, you know, social media to do those kinds of things. So now you're in alignment, you have the guests that have the loving energy as well. How do you use social media and other digital platforms to promote your podcast? So I think it's so important to be able to use social media as a leverage. A lot of people that I speak with, you know, um, in businesses, they don't utilize their, the social media because um, they don't realize the value of it. But that's where everybody is. So if you, you really focus on each social media has their own audience, has their own educational level, has their um, own age group. And you really have to look at each platform and really, you know, cater to each different platform and getting the message out according to the way they think. And also look at your metrics again. What type of people are on your platforms. And that's how you're going to message out to the social media. But the social media is, is a vital component in today's marketing world because everything is going digital. It's really no longer, you're not going to, you know, magazine ads and magazines when, you know, how many times does people buy magazines in a magazine store, you know, in the grocery market when you can get it online and easily pop onto it and, and read everything. It's all digital. So marketing to your audience and more in every, and every platform is different. So you can't just copy and paste the same thing on every single one of them. You have to create and make everything unique according to that audience that is watching you and listening to you. Wow, yeah, that's really that's really true. Because I mean, it's so true with the different age groups and 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 things. They you know, the first one started, then the next one started, and and the younger people gravitated, you know, to that. So that's that's really really helpful. And then as far as like the key metrics and tools that that you know, as we're learning and we're promoting. What would you suggest for these podcasters that are that are starting out and and that are moving into the more advanced podcasting? What would you recommend for that? I like Google Analytics. You know, people don't utilize that enough, but if you go on Google Webmaster, Google Analytics, you'll see who's coming on to your platforms. You'll see the type of people, the age groups, the demographics, where are they coming from, and you'll be able to have a better understanding of who your audience is. And as I mentioned earlier, polls are great too, because if you give them, you know, you don't want to give them too many choices. I would say, you know, two to three and, and max. In a, and ask different questions. Look at what's trending. The one thing people don't realize is that if you go on to Google and you type in a word or you type in a phrase, you're going to get questions on the on that, that page. And those are the most prevalent questions that people are asking on the internet. So if you type in red shoes, all of a sudden you're going to hear a bunch of see a bunch of questions from Google about red shoes. Well, this is what people want to know about red shoes. It goes the same with self-care, self-love, kindness, you know, everything. So you want to cater to your 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 major audience. 
look at those questions, see how they relate to you, see how you could turn them into something, you know, that will help your podcast, you know, and if your podcast is on a specific topic, type in a phrase or a couple of phrases and see what questions come out and use those questions and put them out there in the social media and put, you know, and this is how you start to market and you start to you know, create articles too. Articles are amazing. And people don't, you know, give them enough of credit, but you know, the authority of articles is very prevalent in our society. People still like to read, even though they say we have a low retention span, they're still reading out there. They still like it, you know, give them a short reel and put link it to a to an article, and I guarantee you they'll go to it. <laughs> wow, could you give us an example of doing that that you have done? <laughs> it works. <laughs> Uh, could you tell us a story of how you've done that? Yeah, sure. You know, so I had created a website. So I had met with an herbalist. The herbalist um, had had me do a lot of write, read, research and writing on natural remedies. I was I was amazed with natural remedies. I applied it to my life. I was able to get my epilepsy under control. So with the help of natural healing and holistic living, I got my 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 epilepsy under control. I said, wow, this could help everybody. Holistic living is amazing. And this is when it first came out. I created a website with over 5,000 articles and a good majority that were written by me. And I put, I put, would put out content when, you know, I would put out videos and then the reels came later on, you know, that showed you how old I am. And I would put the links to the articles. And so people would get a taste of it. They would, you know, and especially when reels came out and then I would link it right to the article. And so, and I would take the best parts. So I would take the, take the most inquisitive parts. You want to give a hook liner. So people sometimes give too much information. You want to give them just enough of information where they're like, what's next? You know, and when, as soon as they say, what's next? Well, here's my link and you'll find out. And they go right to the article and they end up reading the article. And if you allow comments, they'll comment. That's even better because if you got really good comments, you'll understand your audience even better. And then you can cater more and more to them as well. Okay. So you're saying the LinkedIn platform, make a link to LinkedIn. Is that, did I understand that correctly? No, make a, so you, you create the reels and then you put like a hook liner and you give them, you make the reel so it, it it you gets them enticed. So you don't give them the answer in the reel. They want to know what the answer is. And then you put in there, you put a link, and you put the link where the content is, and it draws them right to the content. And then they end up reading the content because they want to find out more. You entice them. You got you you increase their curiosity, and you made them more um, more willing and, and excitable to you know and eager to learn about the topic. But LinkedIn is an amazing site. I suggest that to everybody. It's an amazing site for uh, to grow your business podcast. It just has a lot of lead magnets that people are not aware of, and that's a huge market. It, it to begin with, we could have a whole conversation about that. Yes, we could. And and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the time over to Sandy because Sandy has been heavily involved with media as well. She's been on television just like you have been, Stacy. And so, Sandy, with your background in television and and other media, what questions would you like to ask Stacy to help our podcasters out there? Yeah. So I was I was actually going to ask about repurposing podcast episodes, and what do you recommend? Um, for podcasters to repurpose, like in what format should they repurpose? Can they repurpose it and turn it into an article? What do you recommend in order? Because like for me, episode 350 is coming out on Wednesday of this week. And I'm like, I've got a lot of content and I don't, I'm not very good at like, like we just talked to David Meltzer, who's, you know, I probably need to need to sit down with him and like talk about how do I repurpose all this content? Because he's really, that's kind of his jam. So what's the best way to repurpose our content? Because I have so much. Right, I'll, I'll give you a few secrets. I'll let out some of my <laughs> secrets. So I write in, I, I, I uh, so let's say I create an episode. I take that episode and I create a newsletter from that episode. I go into the transcripts. I create a newsletter. I take that newsletter and I put it on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has all uh, they have all business oriented individuals or people who are looking to advance themselves further in life. So you make a newsletter, you create a, a topic, you have your episode, you have a link to your episode, and you can share a picture related to the episode 
in there. So right away, they're signing up for your newsletter on LinkedIn. You've got yourself a lead magnet. So now you have someone that you know is interested in your content. You take that and then you also turn it into um, a reel. You take the reels and you put the reels on all the social networks and you take them accordingly to that audience. And then you can also take the segment and you can take the transcript and you can create an easily to create an article. You can create several articles off of, of, of a transcript, depending on how long the episode is. And you create bullet points and then you put links to the different services and different things that you have to offer or maybe more episodes related to that. And you, then you can put a sign up. Always have a call to action on all these things. Everything that you create, a call to action. People forget that. And, you know, these are the important factors. So you can make newsletters. You can make articles. You can make interviews. You can get permission and say, can I turn this transcript into an interview? Because you did a great episode. And, you know, most likely they will say yes because it's no work on their part, just ours. And that, so now you have, you have an interview written. You have content, in, informational content written. You have a newsletter on LinkedIn. You can take that newsletter newsletter, put it on your own, your own um, newsletter, well, your own newsletter list. So now you have you have four big areas that you've just achieved. And then you have all these reels going out. And you could also you can create, you know, a con you can create content because you have your episode, you can, you know, you have the, the episode itself. So you've hit five broad areas that could bring in tons of new audience and make your previous audience very happy. And as we know, as you know, Sandy, the best um, type of uh, marketing is word of mouth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there is there an overkill like when it comes to promoting one podcast interview or one podcast episode? What, what, what would you say about that? Because sometimes I feel like either there's got to be that happy medium in between. Sometimes it's too much and sometimes it's not enough. What would you say that you found that good number, the sweet sauce? So what I like to do is I make, I make each one so different that it seems like I'm talking about something completely different. Or I focus in on one specific area that I think is really going to really make the audience um, interested according to what's trending in, in today's Google area and today's uh, platforms, what's trended. Okay, this person talked about this. How can I expand this? And then you could even add some of your own bullet points and you could add quotes from the person. There's so many different ways where you could even create your article, but then create a portion of the episode as a quote, you know, from the person. And then you could give that person credit and give them a link to, to theirs. So you have the person who did the episode who's very happy because they just got some extra coverage. You've got yourself coverage because and your 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 bosses are very happy and your ratings are going up and you get new audience and you make your old audience happy. So I don't really think there's an overkill as long as you do it the right way. If you're saying the same message over and over again, then it's overkill. But if you make it so unique where it doesn't, they don't even realize new title, new content, new beginning, new closing. It just, it, they don't, it, it's, the two don't um, really clash. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And Stacy, I, I wanted to know, we have just a few more minutes. Um, I wanted to know um, if you, if you were going to give advice to us to, you know, pitch to a, to somebody else in the media that we wanted to share our story, being on that end where people were pitching to you, what would you recommend? So I, I think when we pitch to other people, the most effective way is, is opening up with, you know, explaining why it's so important to have their voice known and, you know, and how it could benefit them. And, you know, and people already that already have achieved a certain level of success might say, I don't need any more. But then you focus on the message. That's what people, true, true people who are humble and very successful don't care about the money, they care about the message. So you focus on how you can get that message across and how you could change people's lives with what they're trying to achieve. Now that will get a celebrity or that will get somebody in a high status um, position interested because they got into this position because they wanted their voice known, because they have a message. So you focus on the message. You don't focus on how great we are and talk about the, the Los Angeles tri uh, Tribune, even though you guys are amazing. When we do, we do our pitch, we talk about them and their important message and how we can broaden it and share it with the world and how it can make such a difference in other people's lives, which it can. So it, that's what I think really you know gets other people's attention that are in a high status, high ticketed area. 
yeah, well, take it from someone from Dateline. Who should know? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Any any last words of wisdom that you would like to share about you and maybe a story, Stacey, that our, our audience you know could relate to? I just want to share with people that, you know, we all go through something. Everybody has a story and everybody matters. And I think voices should be heard. And a lot of times people don't think you know, the, what they have to say matters, but it does, you know, the littlest things in life are so important. And if you tell a story and you are sincere about it, the littlest thing in that story could just be one sentence can change another person's life forever. The wisdom of words are so powerful and let your voice be heard. You know, whether you're in a grocery store talking to a woman that looks sad or whether you're, you know, on TV or whether you're in front of the camera, you know, doing like a podcast like we are, let your voice be heard because, you know, it is so important to get the messages out. And like the gentleman before us, he talked about lo gratitude, love, kindness, and gratitude go a long way. And that's why I made the journal of um, the positivity and gratitude journal, because without those things in life, you, you will not be fulfilled. And people have to have more, especially in this, these, this time of age where, you know, there's a lot of hate and anger and we really have to be, have gratitude for what we have. And so share your story, share your kindness, share your love and, and, and have gratitude for what you have. Spend a couple of days, you know, a couple of moments each day and look at the things that you are, you should have gratitude for. Cause when we, we forget sometimes what we, what we, what we uh, have and we focus on what we don't have, but you know, stories need to be heard. Just like I told you about that story, that woman read my book and it saved her life. You never know, you know, what your what you could do, how powerful your words can be and share it with, with somebody. And you can, you know, there's so many things that could, you can change someone's life just by giving them a little motivation, inspirational and, and help and, and making people realize that they are wonderful inside and out. And you and you are wonderful inside and out. In fact, you and Sandy, I feel like we sisters, you know, and, and it's just it's just it's so wonderful because you know you both are so aligned and you are both so loving and you are both motivated by the love that you have for others. And and it's just it's such a privilege to to be with both of you. You are amazing mentors in my life. I've met both of you in person and I, I, I kept wishing that I could so that I could hug you in person. And when I did, it just was like, oh just felt so <laughs> it felt so wonderful <laughs> oh thank you well you know i i wanted to add that stacy was awarded the top entrepreneur in 2023 by apple news and so not only does she have the love and the heart and the why that drives her the media background and the you know the expertise in marketing and and growing but um she has the expertise in the business world as well. <laughs> and so combine all that with your, your love for people and your passion for sharing your message. What a, what a just all around perfect package tied up with a bow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. I really appreciate having both of you um, have me on your show. And I really do appreciate this time you've given me to share with the world my story and 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 to talk about the, the podcast as well. Well, thank you. And the advisor with Stacy Chalemi, I want, hope all of you can go and look that up and learn more about Stacy. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more from you in the future because this was such great value. In fact, I'm going to have to go back and, and re-listen to it again and again. And I couldn't take notes fast enough. I'm sure Sandy felt the same way. <laughs> so thank you so much for being with us, Stacy. And we look forward to having you again. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to it as well. Thank you, both of you. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. All right. Well, fantastic. And so we are just, Sandy, was that, I mean, you have so much more media background than I do. What, what were some of your thoughts as you, as you heard Stacy? Well, you know, I love how she was sharing the repurposing of the content because I find that as a podcaster, we have so much, you know, you do a 30 minute interview and, and it's just, it, and then you you released one episode or like me, I do two episodes a week. So I have eight episodes a month. I mean, it's so much content. And sometimes I find it to be like a little overwhelming. And so I really like how she broke down how you can repurpose the content and gave us specific examples and how to do it. 
Um, so that that was really, really valuable for me. Yeah, so many times you get these general, you get these general topics like, oh, we'll go on social media and just, you know, do repurpose it, and you're like, but but wait, <laughs> or just boost yeah. it, or just you know, get out there and share your story, and and then you're like, but how? <laughs> and so to be able to hear those specific hows, I mean, each of our guests, you know, Sam and David, they they just gave those specifics that are so helpful when when we 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 wanted we want to get that message out there. We have so much we want to say, and we but we want the people to hear it. We don't want to just have our mother hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think also some of, you know, like for me, everything I do is intentional, right? And so if you're making the post and you're repurposing content in an intentional way, the right people are going to hear it because the people are going to show up. And, and David was talking about this as well, you know, and Sam touched on it as well, this, you know, earlier, it's the frequency. And if you're showing up in that frequency, you're going to attract people that are in that same frequency as well. And so it will be people that are different from your mom, because I know my mom has never listened to one episode of mine <laughs> ever. <laughs> and she never will. And that's okay. Right? It happens. It happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. so, yeah. I, I, I just think that it's, it's something that we just you know, we just really want to know the how part, you know, those specifics and, and what do we do? So, so that's, that's great to know. 